The morning of the day Linda and Stephen planned to elope to Greenwich, Dickie Reynolds, obviously upset, has come to call on Stephen Gay. I happened to be passing and, and I thought I'd drop in to see you. Something special? Is Linda here, Mr. Gay? She'll be here soon. I, I've got to see her. You know where she lives? I tried to see her all afternoon. She wasn't at home to me. I called her eight times and she wouldn't, she wouldn't talk to me. She's mad at me for quitting the show. What do you want to see her about? Oh, good Lord, Mr. Gay. Can't you see I'm in love with the girl? So that's why you're quitting the show. Sure. That's why I quit. I couldn't stand holding her in my arms every night and her acting like I wasn't on earth. Every time I came near to her to, to tell her, I, I couldn't. But yesterday you could. What did you tell her? What I'm telling you. Oh. What did she say? I, I didn't wait to find out. I lost my nerve. I, I bolted. Well, why didn't you stay? You fool. She'd have jumped into your arms. Oh, gee, do you really think so? No. No, you're wrong. What's the matter with me, Mr. Gay? You know me. You're a man of the world. You've lived. Why, why you're old enough to be my father. What? Uh, tell me, what's the matter with me? Nothing's the matter with you. You've got everything. Youth and everything. If you want her, go after her. If it were any other girl, I... Oh, I never had trouble like this before, Mr. Gay. Well, go on. What do you want? Let me stay and see her. I'll shoot the works the first chance I get. Every man has a right to one break anyway if he's in love with a woman or a man. And I'm a man. And she doesn't mean anything to you. Or does she? Not the thing. Uh, th then you'll help me? Help you? I'll give her to you. You want your break? Well, I'll hand it to you on a silver platter. She's due here in a few minutes. I'll be gone and she'll find you. You should be able to get your message over in an hour and a half, don't you think? I'll try. Well, stage is yours. Uh, Mr. Gay, uh, how will I... Well, what will I say to her? What will you say to her? What do you expect me to do? Write your love scene for you, too? Well, Romeo, you're out of luck. Goodbye. Okay, Mr. Gay. Look here, what, um... What did you say to her yesterday? Oh, I don't remember. Well, for instance, did you say those classic words, I love you? I said, I love you so much I can't see straight. Not bad. Oh, honestly? What did uh, she say? Uh, she said... Oh, no, never mind. Don't tell me. Well, do you think if I said the same thing to her... No, that's only good the first time. Jeez, this thing is getting me. I could write that scene for you so you couldn't miss. If in her heart she really cares about you. Oh, gee, Mr. Gay, would you? Nothing like it has ever been done before. Of course, there was Serrano, but this is different. Let's see now. You're sitting here. She comes in. At first, she doesn't see you. What's the matter with me? Am I going insane? The devil with you. Oh, Mr. Gay, if you've really got an idea... Don't interrupt. I'd be the sap of the world to do it. Well, if Sheridan were in a spot like this, or Shakespeare, they'd go through with it. Well, Dickie, you win. Let's shoot the works. We'll all of us shoot the works. Now listen carefully. I'm sitting here. Doesn't matter where you sit. When Linda comes in, you tell her that you're sailing for Europe tonight. Tell her you're all packed. You're going because of her, whether she likes it or not. She has changed your whole life. She's made life more beautiful, more exciting, more painful. Be sure you get that in. More beautiful, uh, more exciting, more painful. All right. There's nothing as dull as just, I love you. Now, this is a goodbye scene. That's what makes it strong. You're going away forever. You're never going to see her again. All because of her. She's never going to see you again. Say, that's swear. Now, carry that goodbye scene right up to the door. She'll come to you. You start out of the door, then you turn, ask her to kiss you goodbye. Do you think you could do that? I know I can. All right. The rest is up to you. Well... Suppose, suppose she won't kiss me. She will. It's a goodbye scene. Anyone, I mean, any woman would. And after that, it's up to the actors, not the playwright. The moment has been created. You'll find out all you need to know. We'll all find out. Gee, Mr. Gay, you're brilliant. There she is now. I'll go out the side way and leave the stage to you. Stephen! Oh, Stephen! More beautiful, more exciting. More... Stephen! Oh, hello, Dickie. Where's Mr. Gay? Well... He went out. He said... But when will he be back? Oh, not for an hour and a half. What are you doing here? I... I can't... Linda, I've got something to say. I don't want to hear a word you have to say. I don't want to see you. I don't want to be in the same room with you. Either you go or I go. I'll go. 
But before I go, I want to tell you... Then where go I... where as far as you possibly can. Nothing would please me better than to know that you were in China or Africa... All right. ...or Siberia or Timbuktu. Shut up. What? Now, now you listen to me. Let go of my arm. You're hurting me. Oh, I've been me. wanting to kiss you for months. Dickie, let so me go. Let I me go, go, I tell you. I love you. What's the matter with you, Dickie? Are you crazy? I love you. I hate you. Oh, how I hate you. Linda. I... I... I love you. Oh, my darling. My own. Oh, Dickie, I love you, too. Mr. Gay, but did you read the item that Benham may do a revival of your last play? Don't believe everything you read, Flago. My last play died and was buried five months ago. Let it rest in peace. Time does fly, doesn't it, sir? Do you suppose Miss Linda married Mr. Reynolds? Stephen, you've got to take me back. That Dickie Reynolds, you don't know what I've been through in the last five months. What do you think I've been through? No matter what I've done to you, I've paid for it. I led a life of torture, become a nightmare. You're the only one who can save me. Don't you love him anymore? I can't stand him. Last May you told me you loved him. I thought I did. It all happened so quickly. How could I tell? You were so mean about everything. I hated you. I, I could have loved him. I wanted to. I tried. And then we went out to visit his people in Santa Barbara. His mother insisted on a long engagement. Oh, I never want to go through anything like it again. Stephen, why didn't you tell me what a dreadful thing youth was? Why didn't somebody tell me? What um, happened in Santa Barbara? Well, here's a typical day. Out of bed at 7 a.m., not p.m. Three hasty kisses, and then we play tennis. What do I know about tennis? Then, sweating and limp, a shower, two hasty kisses, and swimming while I sit on the beach and burn. Mm-hmm. Stephen... Did you ever see the rich men's sons in their bathing suits waiting for the depression to pass? They're broad-shouldered, handsome, tan. Every one of them was once an all-American something. And ten feet away, you can't tell one from the other. And you couldn't tell Dickie from any of them. No, I suppose you couldn't. Then he gets a rub down and it's time for lunch. Oh, Stephen, after sitting with a clean-cut outdoors man and watching him eat vitamins, starches, and spinach, you and your pills are a midsummer night's dream. <laughs> then at night, the house is quiet. Suddenly, the lights blaze on again, and there are weird thumpings, and the walls shake. Why? It seems that somewhere during the day, he's missed out on a couple of muscles. Only a couple? Yes. Then we went to Connecticut. Fox hunting, golf, polo. Five months of it. Stephen, five months without nightlife, without the theater, without glasses of beer. Five months without pounding the table because somebody has got something crazy and beautiful and passionate to say to somebody else. Without smoke and poetry and laughter and bad ventilation. Without dialogue. Without you, Stephen. Well, well, Dickie. I don't care. I love you more than ever. I know I've hurt you, Stephen, frightfully, but I'll make it up to you. It's October the 9th, our anniversary. I had to come back to you. It's been a wonderful and a terrible time for both of us. Now we're ready for each other. I'm sorry, Linda, but I would like it very much if I never saw you anymore or heard from you or anything. You really mean that? I do. Stephen. Yes? Stephen, when I came in, I thought I wanted you. And I thought you would have to want me if I wanted you. I thought to myself as I was walking around and around the block, in another five years, he'll be almost 60 and interested in bigger things than love. And I'll be 30, which nowadays is very young. And then we'll be really through with each other. And by that time, somebody else will probably fall in love with me whom I'll be able to endure. Because although I'm not a garbo, People do seem to be falling in love with me recently. They do? Yes, there were two up in Connecticut. You see, Stephen, I've become quite mature and realistic, don't you think? Not the romantic girl who once thought life was aflame just because you lived and breathed. And to tell the truth, I even thought so when I was walking around the block. But you must agree I'm being very sensible now. You are, Linda, very sensible. Goodbye, Stephen. By the way... What did Dickie say to you when he proposed? I love you. That's what he said. 
Is that all he said? That's all. You're sure Dickie didn't say anything else? Well, he said it more than once. (laughs) What's the matter? Oh, good Lord, you mustn't go now, Linda. I need you. I need you and a pencil and a notebook. But, Steve... Oh, you've just given me the most exquisitely lyrical, doggone idea for a play anybody ever had since time began. You ready? Ready? Don't just stand there. Clear off your desk. Here it is, October. And we've got to open before the holidays. Did you say we, Stephen? Call Benham tomorrow and say we'll have a rough draft to show in two weeks. That means we'll have to work till all hours. Ready? Yes, Stephen. Act one, scene one. Act one, scene one. A bedroom. A castle in Spain. A bedroom, a castle in Spain. No. A penthouse apartment, New York. A penthouse apartment, New York. First speech. Linda, I love you. Is the heroine's name going to be Linda? Always. Linda. Linda. <laughs> 